What is the biggest flaw with DAOs? Decentralized autonomous organizations are the blockchain version of a corporation. It's a collective of entities brought together to attract and allocate resources to achieve an objective. The objective can be anything, from running a startup to investing in NFTs. The important innovation is the use of blockchain smart contracts and governance tokens to enforce the decisions of token holders. Basically, the more tokens you own, the more votes you get, and the DAO must do whatever is decided by the election. Some people might find it a bit dystopian that wealthy people will essentially always get their way without even needing to go through the messy and annoying step of having to convince people you have a good idea. But that's not very different from how traditional corporations function. So it's not the biggest flaw. Very few people understand how to read code. Anyone who has ever written a program knows there is a difference between what people say it does and what it actually does whether that's by intent or mistake. DAOs have been robbed by hackers and drained of their assets in the past because of such flaws being exploited. But I assume DAOs will increasingly use standard assets and smart contracts that have been tested in the wild, not written specifically for each task. So that's not the biggest flaw. Gas fees impose a barrier to decision-making and keep out small contributors. Getting assets in and out can be expensive. It is estimated the recent failed Constitution DAO that try to buy a copy of the U.S. Constitution at auction for tens of millions of dollars will have burned millions in ETH gas fees. I was wondering if some of the smaller contributions would even be too small to return because the gas fee is higher than whatever is left. But I'm sure using some other blockchain with lower fees could fix that problem, so that's not the biggest flaw. The biggest flaw is that DAO smart contracts can't enforce decisions in the physical world. I like the idea that tokens represent a stake in something tangible and real, whether it's a business or a collectible. At least that's an improvement over most crypto tokens backed by nothing. And using them for governance of that asset is also a little interesting, but not new. Shareholders in traditional companies vote all the time, and there is no reason that must be done using blockchain. The interesting part of this innovation was using a smart contract to execute the decision. But there are only a limited number of online-only use cases for that model. I don't want to sound dismissive of online-only use cases, but we should at least acknowledge that very real limitation. Even the Constitution DAO had an LLC and required contributors to trust the owners of that LLC to actually execute their plan. Trust. I'm just going to say that word again because the decentralization crowd loves to use it as a catch-all value proposition for all their innovations. The owners of the tokens have no ownership of the LLC, and legally, all the assets belong to the LLC. There is a reason they are called contributors making donations, not investors making investments. The token holders have nothing. They must trust the actual owners to manage the assets according to their decisions. And at least for now, there is no way around that limitation. It's not just a technical problem, it's a legal one. If a token did represent a share, it would be a security and subject to all kinds of fancy regulations. I've said in a few of my videos, I try very hard not to make prescriptive decisions about the future of technology because nobody can know what will happen tomorrow. But one thing I have learned in my career is that technologies can be applied successfully in some use cases and unsuccessfully in others. Things don't need to solve everything all at once for them to be useful. But those of us who have actually been responsible for allocating resources to solve real problems know that understanding limitations is an important part of that task.